All right, everybody, what is up? Welcome back, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at a film study of my favorite player in the league, Leonard Fournette. And uh, you know, if you've watched the three previous videos, you'll know why he's my favorite player, so I'm not gonna get into it. I've talked way too much. This is 10 minutes long, and it's called Film Study, How Leonard Fournette is Statistically Having His Best Season Yet. And I believe this was after maybe week number five, week number six. So it's not going to show us everything, but it's going to show us enough. And it was the only video of this type that I could find. So with all that being said, let's get into it. In 2019, is already statistically having his best season so far through five games. He's had 512 yards, which is nearly 100 more yards than he had all of last year, and 38 less carries. He's also averaging 5.4 yards per carry, which is way up from his 3.3 yards per carry last year, and still significantly up from his 3.9 yards per carry in his rookie season. But it's even more interesting when you actually watch the games and see how he's getting those yards, because it's not like he's getting 5 yards every carry, it's actually quite the opposite. Probably most notably, his start against Tennessee, when he had 66 yards and 15 carries, but he had a long of 69 yards, meaning in the other 14 Bro, carries... did you just hear that? 15 carries, but... 63 yards from 15 carries, but his longest run was 69 yards, which means for 14 of those carries, he went backwards. And I remember watching that game. I watched the whole thing. <sighs> it was torturous. He had a long... Until he had this run. ...of 69 yards. Meaning in the other 14 carries, he got a total of negative 3 yards. That's kind of the way this season has gone for Fournette. It seems like he's very much a boomer bust running back, but let's get into why that is. Like on this play, first let's just take a look at what Jacksonville is doing. If you notice, they have an extra offensive lineman, a tight end, and a wide receiver right over there, so clearly this is expecting to be some sort of a run. With a halfback in the backfield and three of your eligible receivers looking as though you're going to block, this is almost a guarantee that this is probably going to be a run to some degree. And it is. They're all going to go out to block those three Panthers right there, and really the Panther you're going to want to take a look at. That's the guy who could potentially make a play here. That's the strategy from Jacksonville, is they're going to have a lot of guys in protection and try to just guarantee that it's going to be at least a solid game. At least, that's their hope. But as you see, when Fournette takes his hand off, one guy isn't able to make their block, and another guy is able to run in and make the play, and there was really no chance of Fournette gaining yards on that one, which is why he just got the ball back. Yeah, what the, the hell happened there? The sort of mass protection is a great way to make sure you don't lose yards. How there is a massive hole there. However, it's not necessarily the best way... Hmm, okay, so yeah, that, that, that defender up here really did make the play. The sort of mass protection is a great way to make sure you don't lose yards. However, it's not necessarily the best way to make sure that you gain mm. yards, just simply because there will be more defenders in the box if you have more... See, on another day, that would have been complete and utter daylight. He would have got through, it would have been him against the secondary, but not today. The guy's blocking. That's also why since Leonard Fournette entered the league, nobody has faced more stacked boxes than him, percentage-wise. So how is he still able to have a 5.4 yards per carry, despite the fact that so many of his runs are seemingly going for 1 or 2 yards? That is a good question. I would try and answer it myself, but I'm going to let you answer it. Well, it's with plays like this. What you're going to see is that Jacksonville's going to have their left guard and left tackle double-team that Carolina Panther right there, and then they're going to have their tight end move up to block a linebacker right over there. So you might be a little bit confused about the fact that the tight end is going to move to the inside to block a linebacker because now you're probably thinking, well, who are going to block the two Carolina Panthers players who are on the right side of the screen? But they're actually going to pull a couple guys over. They'll pull a tight end and also the right guard over to the right side of the screen, and those will be the two guys that will be making those blocks. But really what I want you to take a look at is watch Leonard Fournette, and really what I want you to watch is just see how he's going to start off slow to make sure that the tight end and the right guard have the time to move over to the right side of the screen, but then watch when he accelerates. It's like he just turns on a switch, and even though there was some contact... That's a, that's a lovely counter move. I, I, I haven't seen... I actually haven't seen a counter like that. Because one of the only counter moves I've seen this year was Christian Wade for the Buffalo Bills in the preseason. Anyone with updates on how he's going, let me know in the comment section below. But Christian Wade did a counter, but it certainly wasn't like that. He basically just jogged to this side and then grabbed the ball and then... And then ran the other way, whereas that was a proper, you know, step, a proper stick, stick your foot in the ground and go. And um, yeah, I mean, he, he has clocked the fastest speed in the NFL for, for two seasons in a row, I believe. And, and so with, with those stats on hand, uh, yes, he can drop the hammer and accelerate at any time once he sees the opening. 
and I mean let's watch that play again it was it was quite beautiful green but then watch when he accelerates it she lets see those the right guard let's see those two guys come across right screen, so okay so these two are coming across we've got these two here and watch when you he takes one Excel. this fella takes the other guy perfectly accelerates. and we've got some daylight it's like he just turns on but he still have the time to move over to the right side of the screen but then watch when he accelerates but he it's still like had to cut inside behind this blocker here he just turns on a switch and then had to think pretty damn quickly to bang another step in although he didn't get past this number 47 and even though there was some contact he has the power to power through that contact and gain as many yards as possible so I showed you a bust, but those are the booms. He can definitely have some high-flying plays, he can have some good runs, and that play was an example of a good run. And that's honestly kind of just how the Jacksonville Jaguars running game works. Fournette isn't the type of guy who relies on his footwork, although his footwork is not terrible, he definitely is a power back. He's the kind of guy who puts his head down and tries to run over guys. In certain systems, that's not a great thing to have. You like guys who are more finesse guys, but it all depends on your system. And in this Fournette, who can just lower the shoulder and deliver a hit. But like this play is a good example of what I'm talking about. Where first there's going to be those blocks right there, nothing really too fancy going on. There is a double team with the left guard and center, but the left guard will get off the double team and block a linebacker. And so at that point it will be all one-on-one matchups. But you might notice that I left the tight end who is going to be on the left side of the screen. I didn't actually put where he's going to be blocking yet. And that's because at first he's going to block that Carolina player right over there, but then it's going to move up to block the guy at the second level. He's doing that just because it's not supposed to be run through the left side of the screen. However, it actually is going to end up being around the left side of the screen, since Fournette realizes that on the right side of the screen there's not too much going on, but on the left side of the screen there is some space. But of course there is... It's that Panther who is supposed to be on the left side of the screen, who they kind of just didn't worry about, not expecting it to be run in that direction. And also, there's going to be another Panther who just, he didn't get blocked too well. So. But it looks as if Fournette is about to bang his right foot in and literally turn 90 degrees and go out to the side here. Or, he's going to straighten up and try and get through. Let's see what happens. So those are two guys who could come in and make a play. So Fournette, there's several things you could do, several things guys would do. A lot of guys would try to, you know, bounce to the outside, see if they can get around that Panther on the left side of the screen to try to gain a ton of yards, but that's not Fournette's style and that's not his game. He just puts his head down, runs forward, and gains as many yards as possible. It's a good decision, I think. You're getting the most yards possible in every play by doing that. While I said he can be a boomer bust type halfback, honestly, that's more often than not just due to the blocking concept more so than him actually just creating a great play. He doesn't look for the home run, he just happens to hit some sometimes. When you have a blocking concept that has a lot of guys blocking, it's also going to force a lot of defenders to get into the area and try to get inside that box. But then if you can just get past that initial part, that can result in some big runs, which is why we have seen him have so many big runs, but also why we see him have so many rushes for no gain. Mm. But okay, you know, I mentioned that he can have some big runs. Well, let's talk about his big run against Carolina, and that was this one. What Jacksonville's going to do is have their left tackle block the edge rusher, no real surprise there, but they're also going to pull their full back up to block that linebacker who's right over there. From this point, they can have their left guard and left tackle double team that Carolina interior lineman, but really the key is going to be whether their left guard pulls around to try to block Luke Keekley, who is not an easy guy to block. And you're going to see that as, while he is pulling around to try to block Keekly, Keekly also has a chance to get into this play. This is not a perfect block. It's not a terrible one either. He's going to step off his left foot. question mark here. As of this instance, this could result in basically a no-yard gain, or this could result in a huge gain. It's all going to depend on, can Leonard Fournette accelerate enough to get by Keekly? And the answer is going to be yes. Oh. I mean, he just keeps running oh, and shit. is able to get, pick up just a huge gain. and even had a I thought he stepped on the inside, but no. Chance there for a touchdown, but was still able to get a huge run off of it. That's what Fournette's bringing to the table. That's why he was a fourth overall pick. It's because he just has that great combination of acceleration and power. Again, the Jacksonville Jaguars system of just run heavy, just trying to get him to gain two yards every play, that's definitely debated. That can definitely be considered not a great strategy. However, it's it's the strategy Jacksonville uses. Good block by his wide receiver, too. He's a really good guy to have in that type of system. And also a key point of that is that it just makes things easier on quarterbacks. It makes things easier for Gardner Minshew if you have to focus on the running game. And also another small little thing that is worth mentioning, he's actually been somewhat effective in the passing game. He's currently had 143 receiving yards through five games, which is actually the best receiving yards per game he's ever had at 28.6. The next highest was in his rookie season when he had 23.2 receiving yards per game, so there definitely has been a slight jump. 
And honestly, it does make See, now there's some running backs who would have actually ran out there. But no, Leonard Fournette tries to stay in. Stay in bounds, keep the clock running, keep the ball, get a couple more yards. That's the kind of player I like. Some sense. Like on this play, for example, that's going to be his route. He cuts as though he's going to be running in, but then actually runs to the outside. Relatively simple route, and this is actually man coverage, so the guy in charge of covering him will be that Carolina Panther right there. And so right when his ball is snapped, notice what that linebacker is going to do who's in charge of covering Fournette here. He's creating some contact, which is legal since you're not past one yard of the line of scrimmage at this point. And so if Fournette was just to continue to run through the top half of the screen, it would probably be bad news. However, since he's cutting back through the bottom half of the screen, this is actually a good situation for Fournette. He could potentially get open. But again, what's going to help him here is watch his acceleration. Watch how he is able to, at a complete stop, still just get up to a top speed quickly and easily outrun that Carolina Panther and be able to gain some yards on that play. It's nothing amazing, but it is something that's worth noting. I mean, you don't need your halfback to be able to play like a receiver. There are a few guys who can do it, like Christian McCaffrey, or Le'Veon Bell, or David Johnson, just to list a few. You don't need him to be that good. All you need him is just to be a guy who can just be a fifth eligible receiver. That's really what you need out of your back. And he can do it. I mean, again, 28.6 yards per game, that's nothing crazy. I mean, that, on average, if he continues the whole season, that would put him at 457.6. Nothing back-breaking by any means, but it definitely does help you. That is a significant increase in your value. And also, as we all know, stats don't tell the whole story. Sometimes you only might have a, a few opportunities to actually be able to make a catch, but he's made his catch on those opportunities. This one's another one, where the way the play is going to work is that the receiver on the top half of the screen is just simply running a go-route. He just runs deep, so... That part's pretty simple. And then Leonard Fournette, he's going to just run underneath him. This way, he's going to force the Carolina Panther, who's in coverage in the top half of the screen, deep. And then Minshew can simply just hit Fournette, and then Fournette should have some room to run. And you'll at least gain some yards. This play probably isn't going to go for a touchdown, but most plays don't. You just have to gain some yards on this one. And after the ball is snapped, Fournette's going to look backwards. And so at this point, he's just waiting for the ball. If you see, there's plenty of space. He just has to wait for the ball to get there, and then he has to turn around and run as quickly as he can. But again, this is one of those situations where he has to completely stop almost. So there's no momentum. He's going to have to accelerate very quickly. But once again, that's exactly what he does. I mean, of course he does. I mean, that's why he was such a beast at LSU, and that's why he still shows flashes here in Jacksonville. I think there are a group of people that have kind of written Fournette off as a bust just yet. I don't really see that happening. I personally would like to see him in a... If someone tries to tell me again that Leonard Fournette is a bust, I feel like, I feel, you know, someone actually did try to say that. They did. They said on my Instagram page, I, th I think I, um, fuck, what did I, I, I put up a, a post when Fournette made a thousand rushing yards this season. And someone came through and said, yeah, but he's on a four and nine team or something like that. And I said in reply to that, even better, because of course it just makes sense, right? thousand yards on a team that's not actually doing that well, it makes it even better. Okay, but there was another point when someone said, he's a bust, he's, uh, he's done. <laughs> he's done? And I just laughed, I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? He's 24, 25, 25, his peak's not even going to be until he's 28. And yes, I do realise that statistics show that when a running back reaches the age of 30 after a few seasons in the league, his stats seem to, you know, drop off a cliff. But we're not even there yet. We're five years away. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see Leonard Fournette become a Hall of Fame running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's going to happen. Touch wood. So with that being said, let's continue. But an offense that isn't this Jacksonville-style offense, even though I do think that he fits pretty well into that system. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about Leonard Fournette. I think this guy's talent is off the charts. I know there's been some sort of just issues, but... Just in terms of his talent, I do think that he is very good. Do the Jaguars probably wish that they had Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson instead of Leonard Fournette? I mean, sure. But at the same time, that's... Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, well... Apparently they had a chance to draft Lamar Jackson last year. And they passed up on him to draft someone else. I don't even know who it was, but... I mean, that's... that's... I don't know about that. Being a bit results-oriented in terms of your thinking, I mean... Blake Bortles wasn't a total bust by the time that they drafted Fournette, and they felt like the running back could really help them. And it also definitely did. I mean, you know, if Miles Jack isn't called down there, there's a very real chance that they go to the Super Bowl and maybe even win it. Although, I'm not sure if anybody's beating Philly that year. That team was just so good. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Leonard Fournette. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, that year when Philadelphia won, they had, uh, who was the running back in that game? It was, um...
was a fella that I couldn't believe my eyes because he was talking about how he had three Super Bowl rings now. And the time that, that I actually originally reacted to him was in his college career when he threw the punch. He threw a punch in one of his college career games and it ruined his, his reputation. And LeGarrette Blount, that's the one. You guys know the story. He killed it in that Super Bowl though, didn't he? What a legend. Below, what do you think of Leonard Fournette? Because he is definitely an interesting player to talk about. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. What do I think of Leonard Fournette? Well, you guys already know what I think of Leonard Fournette, but what I do need to do is I need to see what this guy looks like. Because I've heard his voice. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, well, actually, you've got a pretty decent looking channel there. Your thumbnails are killing it. Fantastic thumbnails. But I want to see your face. Holy shit, he's fucking killing it. Look at all these videos. Okay, yep, Jackson Kruger. You found something and you're running with it. That's exactly what I did. When I found something that worked, I fucking ran with it. And it looks like he's, he is absolutely killing the game right now. Well done. But I still want to see what you look like. Wow, this guy's working like a trooper. Respect. Respect. Don't know how much film study one guy can do, but respect. He's doing hockey too. Oh, come on, man. Look at all of these fantastic videos. Do we see your face? Not that it really matters, but it does make a difference. When you're watching videos like this, you want to know who's actually making the calls. But anyway, look, we're not going to find them. Uh, big shout out. Shout out, mate. And um, that's our... Look at Lennon Fournette, done for probably the year, unless he goes and balls out in these last two games of the season, which I'm really hoping he does. But, it, you know, truth be told, the Jaguars haven't really played that well this season, and so I'm not, I'm not expecting any miracles. But, guys, once again, I just hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I hope any Lennon Fournette and Jacksonville Jaguars fans have enjoyed themselves. And, um, yeah, I just want to say that I'll be placing this back on this coat hanger and putting it back in my wardrobe with my 20 other NFL related jerseys. So uh, there's really only one thing left to do and that is to uh, well get changed I guess. Next minute. All right here we are the Jags the Jacksonville Jaguars in their 25th season in the league this year and the 100th year of American football overall. The 100th year? The NFL? Something like that, isn't it? Anyways, guys, I'm going to hang this back up. Leonard Fournette, hopefully one day, mate, one day, either you guys come to Australia to play a one-off game, which will happen within the next five years, I can guarantee it, or I go to the States, go to a Jacksonville Jaguars game, stay afterwards and uh, basically try and con you into signing this for me so then I can frame it and put it up behind us how cool would that be this is the one jersey I would love to get signed and I would frame it absolutely the other ones I don't know about framing but I think if you've got a genuine jersey with the tags on and you get it signed by that player I mean it's worth keeping isn't it and I've got a few jerseys there that still have the tags on and you know they're gifts okay so I'm not gonna feel bad about it they're gifts they're gifts that I want to create into pieces of NFL memorabilia and I've got my subscribers my amazing subscribers who gifted me these jerseys to thank for that and um, the journey continues so everyone thanks for being here thanks for enjoying the Leonard Fournette videos with me if you want to support this channel financially uh, there are four ways you can do that one is to become a channel member here on YouTube. Uh, number two is to go to my Patreon and support me over there. Number three would be to become a Twitch subscriber. I am trying to grow my Twitch at the moment. And number four is, even though I put five up, number four is uh, to head over to www.majorkeyphysiques and check out my brand. This is my brand, my, my gym clothing and accessories brand. And it's something I'm really passionate about and it's something that I want to continue to be passionate about and continue to grow and I believe that anyone who does decide to part with their hard-earned cash and receive one of our products or two or three or whatever you want to buy it's free shipping and I can guarantee you right now that you will not be disappointed with the quality 
And if you are, we have a 100% money back guarantee. But that is not what this video is about. This video is about Leonard Fournette. So, uh, good night, guys. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and play that. Take you down, I'ma say that. Money me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. Huh. So I take that. Ask them now, we'll say that. I've been going to the top and I got what they not, so I know that they hate that. Uh, but I'm on now.